Yvonne Lumbasio. The unit code is DHT 1309, Retail Travel Operations 2. I'm from the Department of Travel and Tourism, School of Hospitality, Travel and Tourism Management. Uh, we'll start by the Kenya Tourist Destination, uh, where, we'll be de where we'll be defining what a tourist destination is. And we say that a tourist destination is an area large enough with a cluster of attractions, uh, superstructures, infrastructures, and target markets. It can also be defined as an area set aside whereby attractions are found and tourist traps which usually get revenue from these tourism activities. Uh, tourist traps are basically those establishments that are usually set up in order to attract the tourists together with their money. For any destination to be proactive, it must have the five A's of tourism uh, in the tourism industry, we have key components that exist, which are usually referred to as the five A's. And the first A is attraction, which is the main motivator that makes people to leave their area of residence and visit different destinations. It is categorized into three, where we have the natural attractions, e.g. the forests, the escarpments, plateaus, uh, water bodies, and then we have the man-made attractions, e.g. the dams and the man-made forests. Finally, we have the cultural attractions, specifically for the cultural tourists, e.g. the lifestyle of different people, the traditional cuisines and dressings, traditional songs and dances. So attractions are the main motivator or factor that determines whether a destination will receive visitors or not. In this case, they must be attractive so that they can be a pulling factor to many tourists. Uh, A number two is accommodation. For any destination to be sustainable, there must be accommodation facilities in order to fulfill the needs of the visitors. These facilities can be categorized from five-star hotels to budget-class hotels, and a visitor can spend in either of them according to their financial status. In Kenya, the highest ranking type of hotel is the five-star hotels, and the lowest is the one-star hotel, but we still have budget class hotels that are not ranked. So accommodation is very important because after a day's safari and moving around, the tourists will need a place where they can get refreshed food and beverage and then relax and call it a day. Next, we have amenities. These are services that are usually required to meet the needs and wants of a tourist while they are away from their area of residence. So these are extra services that the tourist is usually given to while they are away from their area of residence and in the touristic destination. They usually include banking services in case they need to do any transactions security institutions who take care of their security when they visit different destinations, hospitals in case they get sick while visiting a place, shopping malls just in case they need to add something or they forgot to carry something, they can go shop, uh, insurance covers, those that forgot to get insured, they can always get a cover once they visit a destination. And finally, hotels, to offer food and beverage. For any destination to remain competitive, it might ensure that their amenities are of high standards compared to their competitors. And A number four is accessibility. In any destination, there must be transport network that is usually meant to transport visitors to and from their destinations. Any destination should always ensure that their transport system is in good condition and comfortable for the visitors to use. Now, for you to get into any touristic destination, there must be accessible channels. These are the transport networks in terms of the means of transport and the modes of transport that they use to and from different destinations. Uh, the means of transport, we say that things like vehicles, 
the trains, the aeroplanes, the ships, etc. While the modes of transport are categorized into three where we have land, water, and air. Finally, uh, the fifth A is auxiliary services. These are extra services that are found at different tourist destinations and in most cases are usually meant to add comfort, comfortability to different tourists when they visit a destination. Uh, auxiliary services might include the gym, the massage parlors, the swimming pools, the steam and saunas, and finally the theaters in case they need to watch movies. So auxiliary services are those extra services that are not part of the touristic package, but the tourists feel that they want to experience them. So in most cases, auxiliary services are not usually costed in the package. Once a tourist decides to engage in the auxiliary service, they'll pay it as a separate entity apart from what was paid in the package. Next, we'll be looking at itineraries. Uh, they are categorized into two, where we have skeleton itinerary, which is an itinerary that usually contains only the basics that will be encountered throughout the tour, and detailed itinerary. It is an itinerary that shows all the logistics that are supposed to be undertaken in the entire safari. Any itinerary usually controls the activities of the tour in terms of the following. Uh, the first one, the speed of the tour with regard to different attractions that are supposed to be visited and the number of days of the, for the entire tour. So any itinerary usually controls the speed of the tour. Depending on the number of itineraries that are going to be visited by the tourist against the number of the days, then the tour operator or the travel agent is able to determine the speed at which he or she will be cruising around the different attractions for them to be able to achieve uh, visiting the different attractions and at the same day meeting the number of days as stipulated in the itinerary. Number two, it controls the direction or route that is usually taken by the tour operator with reference to the requirements of the itinerary. Uh, any itinerary usually stipulates clearly the routes that are supposed to be taken by the travel agent. For example, if they're doing the coastal circuit and specifically north coast, it will indicate clearly that you need to start from Malindi, then come to Kilifi, Malindi, then come to Atamu, then Kilifi, and finally Mombasa. But the itinerary can never tell you to start with Kilifi, then Malindi, then Watamu, and then Mombasa. So in simple, what we are saying is an itinerary controls the direction of the tour such that the tour is not zigzag. It has to be systematic. Number three, the interest of the visitors to and from different destinations. Before you come up with an itinerary, you must know what the interest of your visitors are. Which destinations are they interested with visiting? What activities are they interested in engaging in? So the interest of the tourist will always be controlled by the itinerary. Once they tell you what they have in mind and what they want to experience, you as the travel agent, you will be in a position to come up with an itinerary that favors them. Our next is the details regarding the activities to be undertaken while at different touristic destinations by the visitors. Again, you need to know the activities that they want to do. Are these people, are they people that love adventure and they want to go mountain climbing, hiking, uh, swimming, etc. So you must keep in mind what they want to do. Some people don't like mountain climbing and hiking. So you cannot take them to Mount Longonot or Hell's Gate or Mount Kenya National Park. So always ensure that you have the activities that the tourists are interested in mind before coming up with an itinerary. We have the total cost of the tour, and if it is a group of visitors, then a clear breakdown is always supposed to be provided, which indicates the amount that each individual is supposed to pay. Uh, you must do the total cost of each package before any tour commences. And if you're taking a group of people break down to them what each individual is supposed to pay according to the package. Don't give them a complete pa package and tell them 
break, break it down by yourselves and all that. You as the travel agent, it is up to you to do a breakdown and tell them each individual is supposed to pay this amount for the package. Objectives of the tour, always ensure that you write down the objectives of the tour that you are planning to formulate, which is always meant to ensure that you are keeping a track of all activities in the tour. As a tour operator, always ensure that you write down the main points when it comes to the formulation of different itineraries. Before you embark in developing or formulating any itineraries, always ensure that you list down the objectives of the tour that you are planning with regard to the touristic circuits that you're intending to take your visitors to. Uh, with these objectives down, it will be easy for you to come up with an itinerary that favors both you and the tourist, and also it, it will save time on your side. Since you'll have an objective, what you're supposed to do after next and the way they follow each other. So basically objectives of the tour help you to keep a track of the touristic circuits that you're supposed to visit and the specific time allocated for each attraction and activity. Our next is transportation. You should always know the tests and preferences of the visitors that you are taking on a safari with regard to the type of vehicle they feel comfortable to use during the entire safari. Before you do an itinerary and tour packages, make sure that you know what type of vehicle the, the visitors are comfortable to use. Are they comfortable with a van? Are they comfortable with a land cruiser? Are they comfortable with a mini rosa? So always ensure that you know the type of vehicle or transportation means that your visitors want for you to do the tour package and tour costing. And next we have hotel requirements. It usually entails the kind and type of hotel that different visitors intend to spend in according to their budget. They usually range from five-star hotels to budget class hotels. Now, according to the finances of your tourists, you can be in a position to tell when you're doing a tour costing if this client will be comfortable to spend in a five-star hotel or a four-star hotel or a budget class hotel or a one class hotel, depending on what budget they are working with. So before you do any itinerary, it's always good to inquire from the tourists what their budget is for you to be able to work within the stipulated budget. Uh, reasons why people prefer to visit specific destinations and not others. Uh, we have those tourists that will prefer to go to Mombasa and not go to Nairobi. We have those tourists that will prefer to go to the Western Circuit and not go to the Northern Circuit. So we are trying to look at some of the reasons that will make a tourist choose Mombasa and not Nairobi or Western and not Northern Circuit. And the first reason is the test and preferences. These are usually very important because they act as a key determinant on whether different people will decide to travel or not. Some of the tests and preferences for different visitors include climatic conditions, the distance to and from final destinations, and the activities to be undertaken at each destination. Now, we, different tourists have different tests and preferences. And we are saying some of these preferences include climatic conditions. Now, if a place is too hot, like Mombasa, we have those visitors that will be comfortable to go down to Mombasa because of the sun. But we have those visitors that will prefer to go to Mount Kenya because of the cold. So climatic condition is one of the reasons that makes tourists choose one destination and not the other. The other one is distance. If a place is far, some tourists will not want to go to a far place and they'll want to visit attractions that are near them. Maybe Nairobi, if they arrived through JKIA, they'll want to stay around Nairobi. And then the activities to be undertaken. If these are people that love adventure, they want to visit places that have mountains so that they can hike and mountain climb. Uh, if these are people that love swimming, they want to go to Mombasa because of the ocean. Uh, if these are people that love nature walks, they want to go maybe to Kakamega because of the Kakamega forest, nature walk, uh, etc. Then number two is the number of people that will be going on the safari. 
It is usually an important component because it has an influence on the choice of destination to travel to, especially with regard to accommodation and attractions that are found in a particular destination. If you are doing a tour package or you're organizing a tour for a group of people, always ensure that the attractions that you're going to take them have enough space to accommodate all of them. Also, the accommodation facilities are in a position to accommodate all of them. You will not want to organize a tour for around 200 people and you take them to a facility that can accommodate only 20 people. You will not be doing justice to the tour. Uh, finally, number three, accessibility to the destination. It is an important element because it determines whether the tourists will be comfortable to travel to different destinations comfortably. The means and modes of transport should always be readily available and comfortable to the tourists. As I said earlier, accessibility to any destination is key factor in determining whether it will receive visitors or not. So the stakeholders around that place must always ensure that the, the accessibility facilities are managed well and comfortable and efficient to be used by the tourists. Uh, the next topic, we'll be looking at setting up a travel agency business. And we are looking at the requirements, what you need for you to come up with a travel agent business. Uh, they are divided into the following phases. Number one is choose a business niche under which we have find your passion. The first step to starting your own company is to know what you are passionate about. This may sound corny, but building a business takes a lot of energy. On top of that, tours are very repetitive. If you aren't passionate, you are going to get sick and telling the same stories three times. So if the first step that you need to do under choosing a business niche is to have a passion with tours. You must be somebody that loves tours, loves traveling, loves traveling, loves organizing safaris, loves preparing itineraries and all that. So every day you must wake up with a passion in the tour business. So that is the first step in choosing a business niche. Number two in choosing a business niche is evaluate your location. Once you have a passion in the tours business, in the travel and tours business, the second step is for you to get a location that you think is favorable for your business. So what you need to put in mind is the location where you're putting your business should be easily accessible by your tourists and the locality should not be in a place that is so interior. It should be in a place that the tourists can easily see it or any other person can easily see it and pop in and ask about anything. Next, you need to identify your target market. After you have a passion and you have your location, the next thing is to get the target market that you feel you want to focus on. You cannot start a business and start focusing on all the target markets that exist in the tourism industry. So you must have a specific target market. If you want to focus on couples, you need to talk to them. If you want to focus on honeymooners, you need to focus on the honeymooners. If you want to focus on school-going kids, you must concentrate first on school-going kids. If you need to focus on those people that are working or you want to focus on team building, focus on one target market first. Don't do a lot of target markets, then at the end of the day, you're not able to manage them. So always ensure that you pick one target market. If you want to focus first on team building, focus on team building, build it. Once it's at its peak, then you can decide to choose another target market. But of importance is start with one target market. Research about your competitors. Uh, under the business niche, you've known your passion, you've known your location, you've known the target market that you want to to focus on. 
Now you need to know who are my competitors in this place that I want to start my business on. So do a survey or a research on the area and know who your competitors are. Which are these other travel agents that exist in this place? What are they offering? What are they not offering? So you need to focus on what they're not offering. And then of importance is make sure you research on the target market that they're focusing on so that you don't do the same. So if they're doing team buildings, you can decide to do honeymooners. Do something unique and you'll stand out. Uh, focus number two on starting a travel agent business is registering a tour company. With your research complete, now it's a good time to consider your options for registering your business. Go to your local tourism board and find out the requirements for starting a tour company in your area. Here are some of the legalities you might have to go through. And in Kenya, you need to go to the Ministry of Tourism, which is located at Utali House, sixth floor. Uh, after the Ministry of Tourism has approved that you can go ahead, you need to go to the Tourism Regulatory Authority, that is TRS, still located at Utali House, third floor. And the first step is name your tour business. Uh, this naming of your tour business usually entails you coming up with five, at least five unique names that you feel your tour business needs to be named. Out of the five unique names, only one will be searched and selected. Now the name must not, uh, what they look at is the name that you've chosen must be unique in the sense that any other travel agency in Kenya must not have the same name. Uh, after you, go, you get the name of your business, now you can register your business. Uh, you are ready to make things official by registering your business. There are different options for how you can register where we have sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporations. Evaluate the pros and cons of each before you make a decision. And the body that is in charge of registering the travel agency in Kenya is the registrar of businesses located at Nyayo House. Next is get your business license and permits. Once the registration has been done, you can now get the license and permits to operate your business. Uh, with the license, you can check with the municipality that you intend to do this business. And the permits, you can get the permits from the Ministry of Tourism, you can get it from Carter, that is Kenya Association of Travel Agents. You can get them from tourism regula regulatory authorities, uh, etc. Uh, next, register as a travel agent. If you are guiding, you might need to complete a course to become a licensed travel agent. This allows you to take tourists around a designated geographical area to find out if you need to register as a guide check with your local tourism board. And in Kenya, uh, after attending a university course in travel and tourism or a college course in travel and tourism, you can go ahead and register with CATA, that is Kenya Association of Travel Agents, so that you become a registered and licensed travel agent who can operate anywhere in Kenya with the visitors. You must also get a permit from the Ministry of Tourism. After registering with CATA, you go with the license to the Ministry of Tourism, who will also give you their license. Uh, open a business bank account. Now that you have a business license, the next things you want to do is open a bank account. This will help you keep track of all your expenses and revenue and make accounting a lot easier. So after you've registered your company, you know the location, you are now a registered travel agent, you need to walk into a bank that you are comfortable with and get a bank account where the funds will be getting into that account. You will not want to handle cash just like that. So a bank account is very important. Purchase liability insurance. Protect your business and yourself by getting liability insurance. This ensures that your company cannot be held accountable for risks. Your insurance company can guide you on your coverage needs 
Some commonly required in the tourism industry are commercial, commercial general liability, property insurance, and accounts receivable insurance. So property insurance basically is an insurance that covers all the property that you'll have to buy in order to start your business. We have the computers, we have the vehicles, we have the seats. And then accounts receivable insurance, this one will cover you in terms of your money. When you start a business and you want to employ some accountants, always ensure that you've insured yourself because nobody can be trusted in the business. So just make sure you get accounts receivable insurance and then commercial general liabilities a general insurance that is needed for the tour company just to be safe in case of any uh, violence that may arise within your proximity your proximity the insurance can also take charge number three is design your tour under design your tour we have the following write your business plan with all the legalities taken care of, it's time to write your business plan. A business plan is a document that holds all your ideas. It's your roadmap that helps you determine how you move forward. So after you've done everything to the company, you now need to sit down and write a business company plan for the company, which you usually guide you on what you're supposed to do. Now, in this plan, you can include your objectives, you can include your goals, you can include your long-term goals, you can include your short-term goals, you can include anything that you feel you need to achieve within a certain period of time. Uh, what we need is you include your company description, the name of the company, the location, the physical address, the contacts, and maybe the services that you offer. The market analysis, uh, market analysis in terms of what is your target market and what is the market, how is the market. If you're doing honeymooners, how many people go on honeymoon in a month or in a year? Then an operations plan, how will you be operating? Will you have a managing director? Will you have a chief executive officer? Will you have managers? Will you have marketers? Will you have accountants? How many departments will you have? And then a list of your products and services. What are you offering to the market? Make financial projections and be sure you account for seasonality. It's okay if you don't have all the answers right away, but it's good to know what to focus on as you grow. Financial pro pro projections are very important. Uh, although financial projections, you need to be very careful during the high season because this is when you receive a lot of visitors. Hence, the finances need to be up to date. During the low season, we don't receive a lot of visitors, but then we're not saying that you don't need to keep a track of low season. You still need to keep a track of the low season. But the most important time when you need to do the financial projections and see if you're making a profit or you are achieving your long-term and short-term goals is during the high season. Uh, it's good to note that once you get up and running, you should learn how to, de to develop a strategic plan to help you reach your ultimate vision for your tour operations business. Next, create your unique selling proposition. With your business plan in hand, it's time to lock down your unique selling proposition. This explains what makes your tour better than competition. It's benefit that travelers can only get by booking with you. Like that, you provide ethical travels and tours. You should be able to define this in one sentence. So you need to create that unique component that will make a client come to your company and not go to company B. So always come up with a package or an element that is unique and act as a pulling factor for travelers to come to your travel agent and not go to others. Then determine your tour pricing. Now that you've evaluated your market and determined the value of your tour, it's time to choose what you'll charge. While it's important to consider your operating costs and market value, the main thing you need to figure out is what customers are willing to pay. Keep in mind seasonality as well as prices for children and groups. And remember, you can always test until you find the perfect number. So with determining your tour pricing, it depends on the different packages that you are coming up with. And remember seasonality. 
what you're charging on high season cannot be charged on low season. So always be flexible with regard to the seasons. High seasons is when we receive so many people wanting to visit different destinations. So your cost can be a little bit high. But during low season, we have very few number of visitors wanting to visit different destinations. So your cost can be moderate. As long as you ensure you are making a profit at the end of the day. Then also consider the prices for the children. You not want to charge a child the same price as what you're charging an adult and groups. If their groups give them a package that is more favorable to them as compared to an individual travel. Craft your brand story. It's time to create a compelling story for your tour. Make sure it has a definite beginning, middle, and end. Find themes that you can carry through the entire experience. A clear narrative makes your tour more memorable. The goal is to have your guests telling their friends all the net things they learned in the weeks to follow. So crafting your brand story is, for example, choosing a specific destination. Like in this case, I'll choose Nairobi National Park. You can decide to do a package for Nairobi National Park and tell people something like Twende to Jibambe Nairobi National Park or it's fun time at Nairobi National Park. You must be creative and come with something that a story that will appeal to the people. Now, once somebody sees Twende to Jibambe Nairobi National Park and the background that you've given in your poster, they'll be appealed to go and experience what is in Nairobi National Park. So always craft a brand story that is unique, unique, appealing, and attractive to the tourists. Next is design a tour logo. Once you've created a story for your tour, it's time to design your brand around it. The first step is to create a logo. Your logo is the visual representation of your business. It will be used in all of your marketing collateral. Pick a simple design that plays into your niche and story. So with any business, I want to believe you know it must have a logo. A logo that is unique, attractive, and appealing to the eyes of anybody. You must choose a logo that the moment I see it, I'll be attracted to come and do business with you. For example, you can do a logo with the big five. Once I see the big five, then maybe I'll be, I'll be, I'll be convinced that when I go to this travel agent, when they take me out there on a safari, I'll be able to see the big five because of your logo. So always ensure that your logo is not too crowded and it is attractive and to the point. Build a travel website. You are finally ready for creating an online presence for your business. This is how many travelers will find you when researching their trips. If you don't know how to build a website, you have a few options. You could hire a contractor or a web designer, hire someone in-house, or use check fronts, code free site builder. Whether you choose, whatever you choose, make sure your website is optimized for bookings. So after this, I think you need to do a website. A website is a marketing tool where the tourists can log in anytime and find information about your company, the services that you are offering, the products that you are offering, your contacts, sometimes the packages that you have and the prices. And if you have any upcoming activities, you can always upload it in your website so that your clients can just click in and see what is upcoming. And maybe if they're interested, they can pay for it and they're good to go. Sign up for an online booking system. You just don't want travelers to find you online. You want them to make and pay for reservations right on your website. To do this, you need an online booking system. Your booking system can also be used to process you in person and over the phone reservation. So you need a booking system. After you have a website, you as a travel agent company, you'll need a booking system that will be used to book different tourists into your company and also airlines. If your tourist wants to be booked for an airline, you can always click into the system and book. And the most used booking system by different travel agents is the Galileo system, which is simple to use and preferred by many travel agents. And number four is build relationships. Under build relationships, we have 
talk to other tour guides. When starting a business, many entrepreneurs think they need not to do everything on their own. This can lead to loneliness and frustrations, and you don't want to do it alone. So talking to other tour guides simply means that before you start this business, establish the travel agents that exist in the location that you want to put up or set up the business. Once you've established them, you'll want to go have a chat with them so that they can tell you this is what we do, these are the challenges that we experience, this is how the business is in high season, low season, and in case you find any challenges, this is how you go about it. So you'll not want to start a business and there you are just alone, you don't want to have contacts with the tra other travel agents and all that. It's always important to have contact with other travel agents because sometimes they can refer visitors to you if they are fully booked. So very important, interact with the travel agents that are found around your location where you are setting up your travel agent. Find a business mentor. Now that you've made a few friends, you should find someone to act as your mentor. This can be an experienced tour operator or someone in a completely different industry. The key is to find someone who inspires you, will be brutally honest with you, and will hold you accountable. Whenever you're, you question yourself, and it will happen many times, it's good to have someone you trust to turn for any advice. So when you're starting any travel agent, it's always good to find a business mentor. And we are not saying that the mentor should always be a travel agent. You can find anyone else that is in any other business. So long as you trust them to mentor you in this journey and see your company grow. Now, this mentor will always keep you on toes. If you are not doing the right thing, they'll always tell you this is wrong. Can you do it? Right. They'll always look at your accounts and all that. So it's very important to have a mentor. Uh, we'll advise that in the travel agent industry, if you can get a mentor of someone who has been in the business for quite a long time, maybe 10 years, that will be good to go. Get active in the local tourism community. Take any opportunity you have to build relationships with local businesses. While it's difficult to walk into a room full of strangers and feel like an outsider, you won't, get, or you won't regret pushing yourself to do this. You'll feel connected to people in the same boat as you get a lot from the relationships you make. Just don't forget to give back. Now, give, get an act active in the local tourism community means you as a travel agent ensure that you join different tourism organizations that exist in your area of operations. If we have a group that deals with travel agents, it's always good to join them. Do not fear. These are the people that will help you build up your business and build you as a person. <coughs> so here are some of the few key relationships that you should build locally with the travel agents and the organizations. So you need to build a good relationship with your local council. The local council, it means the administration within the place where your tour company is located. And then the tourist information office. Uh, we have tourist information offices <coughs> in different places, especially those places that receive quite a large number of visitors. Like Nairobi, we have one. At Utali House, Mombasa, we have one. So the tourist information office, they'll always give you tourists who just walk in to ask about different destinations and they want to go on safari. So it's very important to have a touch with them because we have those tourists that just land in the country and they don't know anything about Kenya, they don't know any travel agent. They'll go to the tourist information office and tell them I want to go to Masai Mara but I don't know any travel agent. This person at the tourist information office will be in a position to give you a call and tell you I have a visitor here who wants to go to Masai Mara could you kindly send a representative? Next, we have hotel front desks and tour desks. Hotel front desks and tour desks are very important, especially the hotel reservations, because these are the people that <coughs> you'll always be in touch with when you want to check in a, hot a guest into a hotel. The reservations people are the ones who will give you the rates that you'll charge in the package. And they're also the ones who will book you the best rooms or the rooms that you need for your visitors. So have a good rapport with them. 
Next, attend a seminar on travel and tourism. When you start a business, you are constantly learning. You learn from your experiences, your failures, and the people around you. But don't forget to take the opportunity to learn from locally hosted classes and seminars. Not only will it expand your network, but you, you will come away with some new ideas and perspectives. If you, want, if you walk away only learning one thing, it, won't, it will be worth it. So as an upcoming travel agent, always keep a contact with the Ministry of Tourism and any other tourism organizations. In case they have upcoming seminars, ensure that you register and attend. This is where you learn one or two things about the industry that are supposed to help you in building up your business. When you attend these seminars, also you get to interact with different people, different stakeholders in the industry, different travel agents. This is where you share your experiences. They tell you how the business is and you are able to grasp one or two things about the business. And number five is market your tour. Networking alone won't bring people to their to the amazing tour you create. They build it and they will come. Mantra doesn't work it anymore. You'll have to work for your first customers. Here are the channels you should zero in on. Now, when you want to start a tour company and you've chosen the target group that you want to focus on, you'll not sit into your office and the target group walks in just like that. You need to do a lot of marketing. Marketing is key when starting any business. For the business to be known to many people and around the, the region, marketing has to be done. So these are some of the ways that you can use to market. List your tours on online travel agents. Make it easy for travelers to find you by listing your tour on online travel agents. That is OTAS. OTAs like Viata, Expedia, local experts, and get your guide today already have experience in digital advertising and have built up a mass following. So the first step that you need to do is to list your tours on online travel agents. So you come up with different packages for different people and the amount of money or the tour costing that people are supposed to pay. Once these packages are ready, you just go to these online travel agents and you upload the packages there. So many tourists will come and access the packages, maybe on OTAS, and after they have accessed and they feel the package is okay, they always get back to you and show interest to travel. Implement search engine optimization, that is SEO, best practices. Now that your tour is listed on a couple of OTAs, it's time to start driving traffic to your own website. The best long-term strategy to do so is through search engine optimization. You can use SEO, best practices to optimize your site for Google and other search engines. So once you've uploaded your packages in OTAs. It's now time to concentrate on your website. What can I do on this website? So you have some visitors that you've gotten from OTAs. The next thing is to introduce vi these visitors slowly by slowly to your website. So at the end of the day, you'll not need to use the OTAs. You'll simply use your website. Now, the disadvantage of using the OTAs is once you upload a package with a certain amount, like for example, you do a package for Masai Mara and you give it maybe 300 US dollars, OTAs will take some percentage. You'll not get the whole amount. So once they get you a tourist, there's a percentage that they charge for getting you that tourist. So as you build up, it's always good to now come closer to your website. Once you get visitors, you introduce them to your website such that next time or in future when they want to book a safari, they can simply click onto your website and they are good to go. Buy Google AdWords. While SEO is great, it takes time to crawl up the search rankings. To get immediate results, you can buy AdWords instead of waiting for Google's algorithm to show your website on the results page. 
you bid on keywords so your site shows up on top of the page. So buying Google AdWords means you can purchase the AdWords on Google such that when a person opens Google, your page is usual, usually has a, pos a chance of popping up. So when I open Google and I want to search maybe a travel agent and where it's located, I'll see the name of your travel agent popping up there. Now, once I see the name of your travel agent popping up there, I might be interested to open or click it and see what services you offer and your products. And at the end of the day, you never know. I might decide to book a safari with you through the popping up. Start email marketing. Once you have people going to your website, you'll want to start building an email list. This list can be a combination of your customers and people who have subscribed through a form on your website. Send email newsletters and promotions to keep your list engaged on your business top of mind. Now, once you have some visitors that have booked with you on your website and you have their data, of course, you'll need to have their email. Always send them your new packages, your new products that you're introducing into the market once in a while or even regularly. If you come up with a new package, always email your clients. If you come up with new services, always email your clients. If you're introducing something in the market and unique, always email your client. If your client has a birthday or something, always email them their wishes. These are people that will feel you care about them. Hence, they'll want to do more business with you. So email marketing is very important, especially if you're introducing something new in the market that I might not have time to go to your website. But once you sell on my personal email, I might click or open the email while I'm relaxing at home and I'm able to see the new product that you're introducing in the market. So email marketing is very important. When you're starting this business and you get clients, remember to get their email addresses. Get on Facebook, connect on with your guests and visitors on Facebook. Uh, where you create a Facebook page for your travel agent and you post pictures that you've taken when visiting different safaris. So once you create a page and you post pictures that you posted while, while on a specific destination, people will see these photos and get interested. They'll always send you messages on Messenger asking you how can you go to this place, what is the package price and all that. So with Facebook, you might as well get quite a number of visitors who would want to go on a safari. Uh, Facebook, you can also post your photos on Instagram where people will see where you've taken visitors, what you do as a company, the products that you offer. And out of this, they'll be interested. They'll want to send you private inboxes asking you about the package, asking you about the place, asking you about the location of your company, and all that. So don't forget to include a link to your website in your Instagram bio. So when you're doing an Instagram page, include the link to your we website when doing the bio, and also your contacts and physical location. Use analytics to find out what's working. When you first start advertising your tour, you'll want to test many different channels. But after a while, you should zoom in on what's performing best. Start using Google Analytics so you can track what sources are bringing the most traffic to your site and the ones that get you the most paying customers. So using analytics to finding out what's working you is basically comparing different marketing channels. Which one is working for me? Which one is bringing more visitors to me? If I use Facebook and not Instagram, which one will I get visitors? So basically, you're doing an analysis of, what, of all your marketing channels and see which one is more proactive and bringing more visitors to me. If it is the use of emails, concentrate on that and build that. If it's the use of Instagram, concentrate on that and build that. So at the end of the day, after all this, you need to do an analysis and decide on one specific marketing channel that you want to use. Number six, after you've done all that, now you can launch your tour. And under launching your tour, we have the first one, host your friends and families. As you prepare for a successful business launch, 
you'll want to do a few test runs. Think of it as your dress rehearsal. Go through the tour, start to finish, and collect as much feedback as you can. Once you feel confident that you've worked out the kinks, you are ready to launch. So for you launching your tour company after you've done all that, I think you're good to launch your tour company where you can decide to invite your friends, your family, your colleagues in the travel agents. So uh, who to invite to the launch of your company is at your description. But it's always good to have a launch of your company where you launch it officially and post everywhere in your marketing channels telling people that you're now officially in business. Not building your own tour business is not easy. From designing a tour and evaluating your market to building relationships, your brand, your online presence, and getting those first customers through the door. There is a lot of pieces to be put together. However, following this guide and your intuition should provide you with a clear roadmap to help you build a successive a successful travel agency business. So what you're saying is it's good to note that building travel agents is not easy, but you need to follow these steps one after the other to ensure that it's success. These travel agents that are working and functioning out there, they are not built just in one day. It took the effort of so many people combined together for them to be built. So you need to put all this together and always know that the customer is right. And with the right marketing in place, I think you're good to go. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.